In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 beginner tips that I wish I knew when I started using Blender. These tips focuses on issues you might face right off the bat and also provide some tips to speed up your workflow and improve your modeling skills. Let's dive in. Tip number one. Here we have a rough block out of an AK-47 and I'm going to add some modification to the grip. So I select the grip and go to edit mode by pressing tab and selecting this edge and pressing Ctrl B to operating a one segment bubble. But as you can see, the bubble is not right. It's like a distorted out of proportion kind of bubble. And if you select other edges like this one and operate the bubble, you can see you have the same problem. All the edges, it's like out of proportion one. So how we can fix this? The reason is we need to apply the scale. What does it mean? This was the most challenging thing I faced when starting out with Blender. So we have a default cube right here. If you go to edit mode and select this edge and press Ctrl B, we have a nice 45 degrees perfect one segment bubble here. So why this one is like this and that grip is out of proportion? The reason is if you go to object mode and select this cube and press N on your keyboard under the item and under the scale, you have numbers in front of all your axes. So for this cube, we have one for each axis, but for this grip, we have different number. So that means we have also different scale for our bevel. This different scales also affect to the modifiers too. So if I go to modifiers and select bevel, the bevel is the same. It's a out of proportion kind of bevel. And if, for example, I add a solidify modifier and increase the thickness. Here also you can see we have different thickness through Z axis and the Y axis. So to fix this, we need to go to object mode and select your object and press Ctrl A and select the scale. So by pressing this, as you can see here, the numbers reset to one. Then if I go to edit mode and try to bevel this edge again, you can see we have a nice perfect 45 degrees bevel. Also, you can find this under the object, apply and the scale. So remember, if you got a out of proportion kind of bubble, you might need to apply your scale. Tip number two. Here we have a sword. I'm going to apply the bubble for some part. So I select this one, go to edit mode and select this edge. I'm pressing Ctrl B for bubble, but again, it's a out of proportion kind of things. So we go back to object mode and I'm going to apply the scale. Also, before that, we can go to item by pressing N and check the scale, but the scale is right and nothing is out of proportion. So why that's happened? Let's go for the blade. Select the blade and press tab to go to edit mode. And I'm going to select this edge loop and pressing Ctrl B for bevel. But again, we have this kind of bevel. So the scale is right. Why it's acting like this? Let's go back to our default cube. I'm selecting the default cube and I'm going to the edit mode and selecting these two edges and pressing Ctrl B for operating the bevel. After you click here, you have some options bottom left corner of your screen. And here we have an option called clamp overlap. By selecting this, you are clamping your bevel and preventing to overlap bevels over each other. So if I increase the number, it will stop right where both reach to each other. This is a good option for almost all the time. But after that, we need to consider something. If you go to the vertex mode and select this one and move this vertex, you will see we have two vertices overlapping to each other. Also for that part, here we have two segments. So if you select this edge and try to bubble, 
sometimes you cannot do the bubble and sometimes you get that weird one from the sort to solve this we need to merge these two vertices together so for selecting the two vertices i'm going to press z and go to wireframe and drag to select both vertices and then press m as you can see here we have a bunch of options for merging and i'm going to select by distance down here as you can see we just removed two vertices and here bottom left corner of your screen you have merged distance so we don't need to change this but if you increase this numbers that means you will merge wider range of vertices together so i go with the default number i'll select these two again i'm pressing m and by the sense and also here again you can see we remove two vertices so now if i go to edge mode and select this one and pressing ctrl v we just solve the problem so let's go back to our sword i'm selecting this one i'm going to the edit mode and let's select this vertex and let's move this around as you can see we have two vertices together so I'm selecting these two and pressing M and select by distance and just remove three vertices. You don't need to select each part and operate this merge. You can just press A on your keyboard to selecting all the vertices and then press M and by distance. And as you can see here, we just remove nine vertices. So we just solve the problem for all the vertices for this part. And if I select this part and this part, and operating the bubble here you can see we solve the problem also for the blade select the blade go to edit mode and press 1 to select the vertices and press a to selecting all the vertices and press m and by distance and here we have just remove 11 vertices so now if i select this edge loop all around the blade and pressing ctrl b for bubble here we have this you can increase the number of segments by scrolling your mouse and here we go so this sometimes happens for that clamping option for the bubble and sometimes happens and sometimes happens by using mirror modifier but just keep in mind if you get some kind of problems you can also check the overlapping vertices too number three this should be another gun which is not complete and I'm going to edit this part. If you select any object on your scene and pressing period on your numpad, you can frame select the object. So I go to edit mode and I'm going to select these two edges. I'm pressing Ctrl B for bubble. And you can see you have this kind of bubble, which is not right. And if I go back to object mode and pressing Ctrl A for applying the scale and go back and again try to do all this nothing happens and if i press one and select all and then merge by distance nothing removed and problem just persists and if i go to modifier and subdivide you can see the weird subdivision solidify nothing we can do with this model so why is this happening sometimes it's because you have fully normal to check this go to overlays and just press face orientation and as you can see we have three faces which is flipped to fix this you can select these faces and press alt n on your keyboard or go to mesh normal and flip also there is a easier way to fix this you can just press a to select all the faces and then press shift n on your keyboard this will recalculate your normals and let's try the bubble for example let's turn off the face orientation select these two edges and press ctrl b and the problem fixed tip number four here we have a basket i select the basket and go to edit mode in selecting this face and i'm going to extrude this face so i'm pressing e to extrude but in the middle of this operation, I just changed my mind and I'm going to cancel it. So I press the escape, but in Blender, pressing the escape won't disable your operation. 
So now I just create a face over my old face. So now I have two face over each other. So to fix this, I usually use Ctrl Z to go back. But also you can press 1, A and merge like before. And by distance, as you can see, we just remove four vertices, which we just created by operating the extrude. This happens also for operating the copies. So if you press Shift D to copy this face and just cancel this by pressing Escape, it won't be canceled. So it just made two faces over each other. Also, this happens if you go to object mode and select this basket and pressing Shift D to copy this. And if you press escape to cancel this, it won't be canceled. You just made two baskets over each other. So keep in mind, pressing escape in the middle of the operation won't cancel and won't disable your operation. Number five is about Shift R. Back to this model, Shift R is repeat last. If you select this one and press Shift D to make a copy. And then after you copy this model and pressing Shift R, you can repeat your last operation. You can find this under the edit menu and repeat last. Also, you can use some operation together and then use the Shift R. For example, here we have this object. and I'm going to repeat this through this circular shape. Of course, you can use the array modifier, but I'm using this Shift R repeat last command. So I need to set this origin to the 3D cursor. So right click here and set the origin to the 3D cursor. And then select this one, Shift D to copy. And before you apply your copy, just press R for rotation and press Y to rotate through the Y axis. And then also before you applying this rotation, you can just press any number like 30 and then hit enter. Now, if I press shift r i can just repeat our last command like so tip number six back to aq47 as you know by pressing middle mouse button you can rotate the view and also as you know by pressing the numpads you can navigate through different orthographic views and also you know that by pressing tilde key which is Above your tab key, you have this pop up menu which you can select any views that you want, for example, front or left or whatever. But I usually use another way which I believe is faster. If I press the middle mouse button and when I'm close to each axis, for example, here I'm close to the x axis and I press Alt, the viewport just snap through this orthographic view. So I release the alt and I rotate to this axis. And if I press alt, I'm just snapping through back orthographic view. Also the up and any angle that you want. And I think this is a fast way to snap through any orthographic view. Tip number seven. As you know, you can define the axis of your operation. For example, if I press R and press Y, it will rotate to Y axis, press X and Z. It will rotate to the axis that I define. Same happens if I press G and Z, it will go through the X axis. And also if I press Shift Z, it will reposition through Y and X axis and not the Z axis. And if I press Shift and X, it will reposition through y and z axis and not the x axis so now i have another way which i believe is faster for example if you press g for the reposition and you want to reposition this through the y axis so instead of pressing y on your keyboard you can press the middle mouse drag it through the y axis so it will snap through y axis and if you again press middle mouse and drag through x axis your object snap to the x axis same thing happens if you go through the z axis so i think this is the faster way instead of pressing the x y and z on your keyboard tip number eight is about two sphere 
So if you have a default cube and if you go to edit mode and select all and then you subdivide this twice, actually you need to have enough edges. So if you press Alt Shift and S and drag your mouse, your cube is going to be like a sphere. But I usually use this operation to turn the edges to a circle shape. For example, in this one, if I go to edit mode, I can select these edge loops and press Alt, Shift and S to make these as a circle. Also, we can select these two edge loops and press Alt, Shift and S and drag and make it a perfect circle like so. Number nine is about sliding. If I select this grip and go to the edit mode and select these two vertices and I want to move this to this edge but if I press G on my keyboard I will break the width and the proportion but if I press G twice as you can see it will slide through this edge without losing the width and the proportion very easy you can slide any vertices through any edge like this and the number 10 is about aligning the vertices so here i can select this one and go to edit mode and the wireframe so i'm going to align these vertices through the z-axis so press s for the scale and z and then press zero on the keyboard and flatten vertices to z-axis also as you can see here on the grip we have this not aligning vertices so i select these one and press s and then y and then press zero to aligning these together so for this one we can just press shift r to redo our last operation and also you can do here too so go to edit mode and select these vertices press s y and zero and also here shift r like so and there you have it 10 beginner tips for using blender learning blender takes time and practice keep experimenting keep pushing yourself and before you know it you'll be creating amazing 3d art like a pro thanks for watching this tutorial i hope you find these tips helpful and i will see you in the next one